On this slide, we just wanted to show you how Pinahead allows you to run a design rule check on your design. To do this, use the command tools run DRC. As you can see, this will test your pin assignments on a number of levels, from the IO banking rules to optimum placement relative to the dedicated hardware. Now, this screenshot shows a lengthy list that users can learn more about from the Pinahead documentation. Likewise, the Wasso analysis is completed by using the command tools run Wasso analysis. This will then let you customize your device parameters and board level parameters. When this is complete, a report is generated that will describe the status of each I.O. bank. Pinhead also has a pin compatibility utility that allows you to facilitate the migration of a design between two density components that are supported with the same package. This is often done when designs are tested on a prototyping board that supports a large density and then migrates to a smaller device for shipping. In this example, a Vertex 5 design is migrating between an LX330 density and an LX110 density. To facilitate the migration, the pin compatibility utility is called upon to prevent I.O. pins from being used that are not an exact match between the two devices. This can be seen by the red X's shown in the package view in Pinahead. Likewise, all these incompatible pins are given a prohibit attribute which is stored in the UCF file and prevents the tools from using these pins during implementation. Before we wrap up this module, we wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about some of the necessary planning that designers must be sure to follow for their pin layout. Xilinx's newest FPGAs have a rectangular array of CLBs. Specifically, we are looking at a Vertex 5 and a Vertex 6 device. As the density of these devices increases, the number of rows increases by adding entire clock regions, so devices get taller and not usually wider. I.O. pins are also shown in this example on the left and the right edge. The center I.O. bank contains all the dedicated clock input pins. This is because the device's DCMs and PLLs are placed right next to this column of I.O.B.s. And they, of course, need access to the input and output clocks as well as the feedback clocks. This column of I.O. pins also contains the reserve configuration pins, and depending on your device family, there may even be some I.O. pins in the center bank. You should also note that in the case of Vertex 6, as the density of the devices grows, extra I.O. columns may be added throughout the device. Spartan 3 and Spartan 6 family members have a different layout where all the pins are more traditional, that is, that they're placed on the periphery or, or perimeter of the die. There is banking structures in Spartan 6, but there is no reserve column in the center of the die, so the user will have to evaluate the placement of their input clock pins when planning their design layout. And as you'll see, a number of these clock pins are placed in each I.O. bank. We also want to emphasize that design layout usually transmits signals left to right or right to left across the die, not up and down. This is because the bit ordering of the carry logic resources propagates the carry signal vertically upward. One of the most important concepts to remember about FPGAs is that the carry logic resources propagate the carry vertically. This implies that the least significant bit be placed below the most significant bit, and hopefully they'll follow bit ordering. This also must be followed for pin assignments. That way, the routing to or from the associated logic from those associated I.O. pins has a minimal routing delay. In Spartan 6 and Spartan 3, we can also have I.O. pins on the top or bottom of the device. But since carry logic is the same, designers should plan on assigning timing critical pins to the left and right edge of the die. This will shorten the associated routing delays and improve I.O. timing. You should also remember that the carry logic resources are inferred automatically by all synthesis tools, so you should plan on your pin layout having this desired behavior. Likewise, recall that to reduce the chances of suffering a ground bounce problem, we need to manage how many pins we have for each I.O. standard in each bank. Again, the Wasso analysis tool included with Pinahead is your best means of analyzing this situation, but try to remember that dispersing 
at least some of your pins that may transition at the same time is always wise. And the earlier you anticipate this, the better. So this means that binary encoded logic and large data buses should be anticipated early in the planning process. Likewise, this may only mean breaking up a bus between two neighboring banks, but the sooner you plan for this, the less debugging you may have to do later. So plan your pin out and use the WASO utility very soon in the design flow. In this last slide, we just wanted to give you an example of bit ordering. In this case, two arithmetic functions have been inferred and will end up using carry logic. Since this propagates vertically, the least significant bit needs to be beneath the next most significant bit as seen here. Likewise, since we are combining the associated bits arithmetically, grouping the associated bits is wise since this will also shorten the routing delays for both buses and help assure good I.O. timing. In summary, the architecture wizard consists of several wizards, including the clocking wizard, the rocket I.O. wizard, and the memory interface generator. These wizards make it easy for you to optimize your design to the dedicated resources in your FPGA. Pinahead makes it easy for you to make good pin assignments that enhance your system speed and help you avoid common mistakes, especially avoiding ground bounce, especially you designing properly for the IO banking rules, as well as having a comprehensive design rule check of your plan pinout all of which, again, is designed to make your design more successful earlier and make you more productive faster. Well, there are lots of places to learn more about FPGAs, and they all start at support.xilinx.com. To learn more about the architecture wizard, use the Help button in the dialog box. It really does not get any simpler than that. However, if your question has to do with the silicon functionality features, or limitations of the silicon, you should check out your device user guide. Each user guide contains a clocking resources and clocking management section. One of the best software manuals is the Synthesis and Simulation Design Guide that is available online. This provides general recommendations for coding practices and specific tips for coding for particular FPGAs. There is also the Pinahead user guide which can be accessed from the help menu from the ISC software or from the website. If you would like to see what other courses we offer or what other free REL's are available, go to the Xilinx Education link you see here. I would also like to mention again that there are two basic FPG architecture modules that discuss the basics of Xilinx's newest architectures, Vertex 5, Vertex 6, and Spartan 6. You may find this very useful, especially if you want to learn more about the device differences. Again, my name is Frank Nelson. You've been listening to the Architecture Wizard and Pinahead REL. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you for your business.